bless God, bless God. Um, Pastor Alicia Williams, and this is Life in Christ in the National Church. We are in our midweek Bible study. The Lord blessed us to see yet another November, and we thank God for that. And here at Life in Christ in the National Church, as the Lord leads us into the month of November, we have deemed this month as the month of thankfulness. So what that means for us here at the church is that all month long, in our today prayer points, we'll search out scriptures and we'll pray thanksgiving and thankfulness scriptures. And here in our midweek Bible study, we will learn and glean as much as we can about what the Bible teaches us about thankfulness. And so tonight, the title of this midweek Bible study is Thankfulness. And so that leads us into God's word, that leads us into an account of scripture that ministers to our hearts, our minds, and our souls about thankfulness. What we're going to do tonight, we're going to get a glimpse of, of the power uh, uh, and, and, and the essence of what thankfulness entails. And I know um, from a personal perspective, when I think about thankfulness, Thankfulness connects to when things are going good or when I'm receiving something good or when good things happen or when things are in order. Um, everybody has their life, their health, and their strength. And, and that's good. That's, that's um, a, a level of thankfulness. But in this month, as we go through scriptures, we read in God's word, the Lord is going to minister to us on another level. And so tonight, I just ask that you prepare your heart to see what the Lord will minister to us tonight from his word about thankfulness. And so tonight, we already know that the title of this midweek Bible study is indeed thankfulness. We already know here at the church all month long, we're going to glean and learn as much as we can about what the Bible teaches about thankfulness. And so tonight our scripture reading is coming from the Gospel of Luke. We're going to be in the Gospel of Luke, the 17th chapter. And we're going to read just a passage of scripture. And this is a familiar passage. It's a familiar story. This account of scripture is about the ten lepers. This account of scripture allows us to see what entails in, in, in the, the power and, and the grace of thankfulness. And so we're going to read that on tonight. Of course, we're coming into a new area of study as we study um, in the word of God about thankfulness. And so we, we prepare, um, um, even, even in this month of November, of uh, our, our Thanksgiving holiday, our, our Thanksgiving celebration is, 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 is coming. So this is... Um, and we're preparing for our Thanksgiving season. And so while we're here um, learning and gleaning about what the Bible teaches us about thankfulness, I think that also helps us to prepare for our Thanksgiving season. Um, and so here at Life in Christ in the National Church, we come into um, um, this, this, this place of thankfulness. We, we come to embrace this month of thankfulness. And so tonight, um, our study, I believe, will lead us to experience the true nature of thankfulness and what that experience entails. We already know we'll be discussing and sharing about the 10 lepers. And, and we already know that's a familiar passage of scripture. But we're looking tonight for the true nature of thankfulness and what that experience entails. And so tonight our study takes us into yet another familiar passage of scripture. Tonight our study will cover the account of scripture that ministers to us about the healing of the 10 lepers. Why, I guess is the question, would we choose this account of scripture to learn and glean as much as we can about what the Bible teaches about thankfulness? And so we come to this account of scripture 
And this account of scripture, I believe, shows us and, 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 and it is an example of the pure essence of thankfulness and what that entails. And I want us to be able to experience for ourselves. I want us to be able to see it for ourselves. I want us to fully and completely embrace this thankfulness, this season of thankfulness. It's, it's, it's um, a challenge. It is, it's a charge because we don't feel thankful all the time. We, we don't feel like being thankful. Sometimes it's hard to, to mutter a, a thankfulness off of our lips, but this month we will be diligent. This month we will be intentional and God is going to lead us in and by and through his word. And so we already know the title of this week's midweek Bible study is simply thankfulness. It doesn't have any additional caveats to it. It's just thankfulness. And I believe in times such as these, it's it's easy to to take um, uh, the essence and 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 the grace and and the power of being thankful and 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 giving thanks and having thankfulness in our hearts for granted. And 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 why? Because when when you're thankful, scientists scientists have shown it improves your health. When you're thankful, scientists have shown that it improves your emotional stamina and your emotional preparedness. And so, and so the word of God doesn't tell us to be thankful just to be telling us to be thankful. There's so much wrapped up into it and there's so much benefit wrapped up into it. And so um, we tonight will take the opportunity to share and glean from God's word about thankfulness and, and about um, the, the thanksgiving that we celebrate once a year on, on occasion. And, and as we go into God's word, we're going to take a glimpse of what the scripture reveals and what the scripture teaches about thankfulness and what, um, what it all entails. And this leads us once again to take up, as I say all the time, take up our mirror and, and move into a place of intent and action. Uh, I was telling um, uh, the pastor from the Philippines that, that God's word is, is, is live and active. And, and you feel it moving. You, you see it moving. It's, it's tangible. And so when we start talking about thankfulness, when we start t- talking about what the scripture reveals to us on tonight will come to understand that gosh being thankful and 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 thankfulness is a gift from god and so i can tell so many stories about how good god has been in my life and and all the exceedingly and and abundantly things that christ has done in and for my life but tonight our scripture reading And this midweek Bible study, I believe, calls us into account. It it calls us to 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 take 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 note and 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 see if if it requires a gift or if it requires us feeling a certain way to be thankful or to give thanks and and or 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 having thankfulness or if we find ourselves taking Giving thanks and being thankful and thankfulness for granted. Where will we find ourselves? And again, as I always share, it's not about the beam in our eye, but it's about what we do, what what we find. And so again, it's not about pointing out the beam in our eye. We already know, and God already know what's there. What's what's most important to God is that this this is a challenge for us. That that this is is a charge for us to work on getting it right in our hearts and our minds and our souls before God so that we can get it right before all the world. And so this, you know, and I say it all the time, this is another rich lesson. This is another empowering um, lesson. Um, and, and I say it's, it's, it's rich and I say that it's empowering because it charges us and it challenges us to move into a greater place in God, into a greater place in the things of God. 
And so tonight we'll be reading in the Gospel of Luke, the 17th chapter. And I want us to be sensitive to Holy to the Holy Spirit. And I want us to be intentional about God's word and what the Lord desires to reveal to us tonight in our scripture reading as the Lord ministers and, and teaches in this account of scripture about thankfulness. So again, we are reading in the Gospel of Luke, the 17th chapter. Tonight, we're going to start at the 11th verse. And in this portion of the Gospel, I believe the Lord ministers to us the essence of giving thanks and, and the essence of being thankful and having thankfulness. Tonight, our midweek Bible study helps us to set our focus on the true meaning of this season. We already mentioned that. Thanksgiving, the celebration of Thanksgiving is coming up. We already mentioned that. And so we're in that season and we're preparing for that season and um, for this season. And, and so um, and in preparing for this season and, and for setting our focus on the true meaning of this season, here at Life in Christ International Church, um, I, I believe that... Um, and, and all night, night, all life long, not just for our midweek Bible study, but my prayer is that we not only read about thankfulness in the scriptures on tonight, but that this study and the evidence and the manifestation of God's word reveals itself in our hearts and our minds and our souls because we need it. This church needs it. This dying world needs it. Thankfulness. And so we already know we're reading and studying um, in, we're using the Amplified Bible. We're using uh, that translation for, for our studies. And, and we're going into God's word on tonight, recognizing that this midweek Bible study is about thankfulness. And, and the hope and the prayer is that we are intentional, that, that we see, that we experience, and that we possess the nature of thankfulness all life long, not just tonight as we take a few moments in this midweek Bible study, but all night, all life long. And, and as the old church would say, um, even God doesn't, even if God, let, let me get that right, even if God doesn't do another thing for me, we, we heard the old church mother say that even if God doesn't do anything else he's already done enough and so may the lord god find within us within every part of our being thankfulness and so again we're reading in the gospel of luke the 17th chapter we're going to go into our scripture on tonight we're going to start reading tonight at verse 11 and in that verse we um come to the, the account of scripture about the 10 lepers. And so we're going to read um, just that passage. We're going to read um, starting at verse 11. We're going to end our scripture reading on tonight at verse 19. And, and that's where we're going to complete our midweek Bible study. And so let's get right into God's word on tonight. And, and again, we're reading in the gospel of Luke. We already know where we're at. We already know we're going to be reading in chapter 17 and that we're going to be beginning at verse 11. And so if you're at home, you're watching this, you're listening to this, um, you want to read along with us, you'll find us at Luke, the 17th chapter, starting at the 11th verse. And the scripture reads for us on tonight. While Jesus was on the way to Jerusalem, he was passing along the border between Samaria and Galilee. Verse 12, as he entered a village, he was met by 10 lepers who stood at a distance. Verse 13, and they raised their voices and, and called out, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Verse 14, when he saw them, he said to them, go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were miraculously healed and made clean. So this account of scripture leads us into the nature 
of thankfulness. It leads us into what thankfulness entails. But here in this account of scripture, we see that Jesus was passing along the border of Samaria and Galilee. We see that as he uh, was entering a village, there were 10 lepers who stood at a distance and, and they raised their voices and called out, Master, have mercy on us. So their condition, their situation, and their location will come to see is not the best. It's it's not like they were at Neiman Marcus. It was, it's not like they were at um, a, a, a Four Seasons Hotel. It's not, it, no, it's not like they were at the Ritz Carlton. The location that they were in, the situation that they were in, the condition that they were in was not very good. And so we come into the, this account of scripture and we encounter this familiar story. And here in our scripture, the verses tell us that Jesus, as we already know, was on his way to Jerusalem. And, and he entered a village along the, the border of Samaria and Galilee. And there he met the 10 lepers who stood at a distance. The scripture's account tells us that they raised their voices and that they called out to Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. I, I always take it here. I have to take it here um, because of the, the, the power behind humility and the power behind Resolve and the power behind being sober in Christ Jesus. We live a life where we need to raise our voices and call out, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Even if we are sitting at the Ritz Carlton, even if we are hanging out at the Four Seasons Hotel, hear what I'm saying to you on tonight. And so, the dynamics of these verses lead us to understand a number of things. One, what Jesus was doing. Two, where Jesus was located. Three, who he was dealing with and what their cry to the Lord was about. Not only is all of this revealed to us in the scriptures, our scripture also tells us Jesus' response to these 10 lepers who, as the account of scripture says, called out to him, Master, have mercy on us. Some of us sometimes live a life where we feel like or think that we're so entitled that calling out and raising our voices to the Lord Jesus, have mercy on us, that that's beneath us. Lord God, have mercy. Or we have so much money in our bank accounts or we have a, a five bedroom house or we have you know a, a high paying job let us not miss it on tonight this is about grasping jesus this is about grasping what the lord is ministering to us about thankfulness and what it entails and so we look at this and we see that Jesus' response to the 10 lepers, I believe was full of grace and it was full of compassion. It was full of love and care. We, we, if we did a little study, we, we would come to understand that the place where Jesus was passing along the border of Samaria and Galilee was not the greatest place. And, and if we did a little bit more study, we would come to understand that the lepers were not allowed to be around others. It was the law. If, if, if they were to come in the vicinity of others, those without leprosy, those healthy, they were required by the law to announce their condition and announce themselves. So we understand what is transpiring here. So we understand like how the Lord calls us um, into understanding and, and how the Lord calls us into being sober about his word and sober about who he is. 
And so as we read in God's word, we come to realize and also understand that Jesus wasn't concerned about the area he was in, nor, nor was he concerned about um, the condition of the 10 lepers. It it's very much seems that he was mainly concerned and responding to the voices that called out to him, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And so as we, we capture tonight the, the intricacies of this account of scripture, we come to notice, we, we come to realize the kind of God we serve. We come to realize what's most important to him. It's, it's not our place. It's, it's not our location. It's not our status. It's not even whatever ailment or condition or situation or circumstance that we face. But I believe it's simply that we raise our voices. It's simply that we call out to Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. As I was studying this scripture and as I, I, I was reading, I just, I just, I, the first thing that, that welled up into me is that I, I so much love the Lord. I, I love how he, he cares for us and, and I dare not separate myself from the 10 lepers as if in any way I'm better or above. And as I already mentioned, I, I, have empathy and, and, and sorrow and, and compassion for those who somehow get lost or, or have lost their way and live and think as if they're above needing God's mercy, as, as if they are above needing God's healing and deliverance and cleansing and restoration. And, and so I, I won't go into that I believe that that's a whole different Bible study lesson. But but I encourage you, tonight, quiet your spirit. Tonight, hush your soul so that you don't miss the voice of the Lord tonight. That you do indeed walk in the fullness of your thankfulness. And so after the Lord shows us in his word, the, the magnitude of, of what this account of scripture entails, I believe he leads us to experience how he delivers mercy, how he executes compassion and care in our scripture tonight. The Lord tells the 10 lepers, as the scripture reveals to us, when he saw them, he said, the scripture says, go and show yourselves to the priests and, and the scripture says, as they went, they were miraculously healed and made clean. That's how the Amplified Bible teaches us tonight. That's how the Amplified Bible unfolds uh, this scripture reading to us on tonight. And so this midweek Bible study is about thankfulness. It's about this account of scripture that enables us to see to understand, to know, and experience the intricate details that I believe leads to thankfulness. I want us to get it. I don't want us to miss it. I want us to walk away full in abundance, in exceedingness. And so what's captured in the intricate details of our scripture tonight, I believe, prepares us to fully embrace and grasp what the Lord is ministering to us tonight about thankfulness. Simply, tonight, the prayer is as God's word continue to work in our hearts and in our minds and our souls, we come to live out the full manifestation of thankfulness. And so with that, we want to continue in our scripture reading as we come to 
um, our last and final verses, excuse me, my, this laptop is just moving all over the place tonight. It normally doesn't move like this, but for some reason it wants to move and jiggle and jiggle and jiggle. So, um, I have to fix that, get that fixed. But anyhow, we're going into our next set of verses. We are continuing our reading at Luke 17. We're going to continue at verse 17. And so tonight we're reading God's word from the Gospel of Luke. And in these verses, it's important that we meet God in his word. That's what this midweek Bible study is about. It's important that we walk in God's word as if we are physically there in this moment. And so, so we take courage um, knowing that the word was designed um, and and. For God to, to, to save, to heal, to set free, and to deliver. And, and we, as we continue, we want to allow the Lord to show us tonight in his word as captured in this account of scripture, in the gospel of Luke, thankfulness. We don't want to just show up and, and read it. But we want to carry this with us in our souls. We want this to be very much a part of our being, very much a part of who we are. And so tonight, again, we know that this midweek Bible study is about thankfulness. And, and we continue in this account of scripture and we come. That's why we're here to fully embrace what God has provided in his word. We are encouraged to look for the, the manifestation of thankfulness in our lives. And so with that, as we continue in our scripture, again, the Gospel of Luke, the 17th chapter, and verse 15 reads for us on tonight. One of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, glorifying and praising and honoring God with a loud voice. Verse 16. And he lay face down at Jesus' feet, thanking him over and over. He was a Samaritan. Verse 17, then Jesus asked, were not 10 of you cleansed? Where are the other nine? Verse 18, was there no one found to return and to give thanks and praise to God except this foreigner? Verse 19, Jesus said to him, get up and go on your way. Your faith, your personal trust in me, and your confidence in God's power has restored you to health. What's entailed in this account of scripture is indeed rich. What's entailed in this account of scripture, if we dare embrace it, if we dare come to understand it, and possess it. And the reason I say that is because the Lord shows here how we act and what we do. If and when we take thankfulness for granted. He also shows us in this account of scripture what honors him. What, what, what his expectation is for those who serve him. And, and so I'm encouraged to find myself in the word. As you read this account of scripture, are you one of the nine or are you the one who turned back and, and gave thanks and, and praised God? And so when, when I say I'm encouraged to find myself in the word tonight, I'm encouraged in this season of thankfulness to find myself thankful. And I want the same thing for you. There, there's no crime in being thankful. There, there's no, no, no um, extra work or that has to be done. Nor does being thankful cost anyone anything at all. And as we see tonight in our scripture, in this account of scripture, it brings us when we're thankful. 
And when we show thankfulness, it brings great reward. It brings miraculous healing. It brings a divine encounter with God. It brings divine freedom and worship and divine declaration in Christ Jesus. As he spoke to the man, as Christ spoke to the man who was once a leper, Christ declares to the man, get up and go on your way. Christ declares to the man, your faith, your personal trust in me and your confidence in God's power has restored you to health. What I don't want us to miss out on tonight. A lot of times when we, we think about being restored to health, we think only in the capacity of physical health. So if I had a sprained ankle, now my sprained ankle is healed. What the Lord is ministering tonight is divine wholeness. When, when, when he, he, he declared over this man who was once a leper um, that, that he was now restored to health, that means emotional health, that means spiritual health, and that also means physical health. I don't want us to miss that tonight. It's, it's imperative tonight. Um, and, and, and I wanted to, to add that simple point. I wanted to, to, to reemphasize that divine fact. And oftentimes we, we try to live a life of, of thankfulness without the Lord. And we already know that that's temporal. Oftentimes it's, it's what the psychologists call tryptophan. It's, it's a chemical that, that causes the body to feel happy. And again, do your research. It's temporal. It's, it's, yeah, it's temporal. But here in our account of scripture, God reveals to us in his word that divine thankfulness is found in getting up and going on our way because our faith, our personal trust in Christ Jesus and our confidence in God's power has restored us to health. It, it's important that we don't try to, to reach for thankfulness in any other manner. We, we will find ourselves wanting and, and we'll only just be fooling ourselves. And I want us to get that. I want that to be made plain. It's important. And so tonight, one of the 10 lepers showed us what it means, I believe, to be thankful, what, what the true essence of, of thankfulness entails. It entails, and I say it again, getting up and, and going on our way. It entails our faith. It entails our personal trust in Christ Jesus. It entails our confidence in God's power to be restored to health. Take that with you. Cultivate that. Walk that out in your life and your walk in your relationship with the Lord. And so I do want to, to, to add this, and um, I believe oftentimes, and it's unfortunate, we try to find thankfulness and, and try to live a life of, of thankfulness um, and, and, and use all kinds of other things um, to get there. We, we try to use a, a different source to get to thankfulness or to possess thankfulness or have thankfulness, and the Lord in his word, tonight reminds us that that other way or that different way or that different source, it will rot, the scripture says, it will rust and it will fade away. But God's divine thankfulness that's found in faith, God's divine faithfulness that's found in personal trust in Christ Jesus, God's divine thankfulness that's found and the confidence in God's power will indeed restore us to health. And so I encourage you to ponder on that. See how the Lord ministers to you in that way. And, and I want you to allow that revelation to really, really sink way down deep. And, and I personally can't be everywhere and in every circumstance and situation but God shows us in his word that he is always there and all we have to do is reach in faith 
reach in personal trust in Christ Jesus and reach in confidence in God's power and be encouraged in the Lord that he will indeed restore us to health. And again, just a reminder, we're not talking about, excuse me, I'm rattling pages here because I'm, I'm reading from my notes, but we're not just talking about physical health. If I have a sprained ankle, God is just not going to heal my sprained ankle. When the Lord comes, he ministers in wholeness. He takes care of all of it. As I said, emotional health, physical health, and spiritual health. And so God's divine thankfulness reveals itself in our faith. It reveals itself in our personal trust and confidence in God. And so as we conclude, as we end our midweek Bible study on tonight on thankfulness, this leads us into reaching and it leads us into searching our lives for that thankfulness. And, and God has made sure that we reach and search for it the right way through faith and through personal trust and confidence in God. I can't say it enough through faith, through personal trust and confidence in God. We really don't, I don't think I need to say anything else about thankfulness on tonight. If, if we look for it through stuff, if we look for it through things or through people, we will always, always, always come up short. We, we, we live to know that the things and that the stuff causes thankfulness because it originates and it's birthed from our faith and our personal trust in Christ Jesus and our confidence in God's power to restore to health. That has to be the foundation. That has to be the battery that keeps everything functioning and running and going with power. God has to be the source all the time. And so this divine insight and revelation from our study, um, I believe will continue to bless our souls. It, it'll continue to reach us right where we are. Even after this midweek Bible study is over, even after we, we lay this a study down and we go on to our next study this word is still moving in our hearts and our minds and in our souls and so with that before we close i do want to um go ahead and and um share our, our announcements of course tomorrow night we will be with our young people we have our youth friday scheduled uh for the church and then um we have our uh, sunday school hour every sunday morning at 10 a.m and then we have, of course, every Thursday evening, we have our midweek Bible study. And um, our end of month worship will be, um, and I have the information here, on Sunday, November 21st at 1130 a.m. So what that means for us here at the church, we have our uh, Sunday school hour at 10 a.m. And directly after that, we'll go into our end of month worship. And so... Tonight, the Lord blessed us and graced us to learn about thankfulness. And we, we were able to glean from a familiar story in scripture about the 10 lepers and about the one um, uh, out of the 10 that, that came back and, and um, showed and allowed us to see and allowed us to experience the, the what is entailed in and with thankfulness. And I pray that this study, I pray that this lesson blessed your soul. I pray that it reached you where you are. And I pray that um, it would indeed bless you all life long. And so with that being said, we're going to go ahead and close tonight with a word of prayer. Forgive me, I always like to open with prayer. And so tonight we didn't get there. I didn't open with prayer. Um, so um, we went straight into the lesson. So I ask that you charge it um, um, not to my heart. Um, um, and um, just uh, it slipped my mind. And so with that being said, let us go ahead and close right now with a word of prayer. And Father, we love you on tonight. We thank you, Father, for the ability and for the enablement, Lord God, to be thankful. We thank you for your thankfulness. 
We thank you, Father, for being able to glean in and through and by your word about what it entails to be thankful and what thankfulness is. Continue, Father, to lead, guide, and direct our lives. Continue, Father, to be with us, to go uh, before us in all things. Help us, Father, to reach and search out that thankfulness in our minds, in our hearts, and our souls. Cause us, oh dear God, to live it out in you, through you, by you, and for you. Father, you continue to get the glory. You can continue to get the honor and the praise. And Father, as we meet with our young people on tonight, they're very precious in your eyes. I ask that you would touch them on tonight where they are. You know what's going on in their lives. You know what their needs are well before um, any of us will know. So touch them where they are. Again, Lord, we petition you. We ask you to raise them up to be mighty men and women of God. We thank you for them now, Lord. We thank you for our tomorrow to celebrate and, and worship with them. Be with us there, Lord. Anoint the building. Anoint the place where we're going to be. And all of that we bring before you now. We love you, Lord, and we thank you, Jesus. <laughs> In Jesus' most holy and precious name, I do pray. Amen, amen. God bless you all. I will see you back here. Of course, tomorrow night we'll be with the young people. But I'll see you back here Sunday morning for our Sunday school hour. Have a blessed one.